This guide covers all the actions the machinist learns from level 30 to 50 in order. Beginning with a primer on how to play the job specifically at level 30 to get you started. We go over how each action is meant to be used and recommend ways to use it when relevant. In the summary, we will cover a detailed attack rotation for use at level 50 that encompasses all of the things you learned throughout this guide. Now then, let's start with your 1 2 3 combo. Split shot, slug shot, and clean shot. All three generate heat gauge, which we will get back to in a bit. Clean shot is particularly important as, at this level, it also serves as your hardest hitting attack. When nothing else takes priority, you want to make sure to go through this 1 2 3 combo for your weapon skills. With the exception of split shot, none of your other weapon skills will cancel this 1 2 3 combo, and combos last up to 30 seconds. So you can safely derail to focus on other, more important actions for a while. Speaking of spread shot, this is your area of effect, or AOE for short, option. Spread shot is superior to your 1 2 3 combo on two or more targets and should simply be spammed as much as you can. Take note that the attack is a cone in front of you, so make sure to hit as many enemies as possible with it. Next, Hotshot is a weapon skill on a cooldown of 40 seconds by default, but this is affected by skill speed, so it might be useful to simply take note that its cooldown will always be equal to 16 times the recast time of your other weapon skills, the global cooldown as it is commonly called. Hotshot should be used on cooldown on a single target and at this level entirely skipped on two or more targets. Hotshot's damage is higher than the average potency of your 1 2 3 combo, but is strictly lower than clean shot. Now, let's talk about the heat gauge. Whenever you use certain actions, namely your 1 2 3 combo and spread shot, you generate 5 heat gauge, up to a cap of 100. When you have 50 heat gauge, you can use the ability Hypercharge, which boosts the potency of your single target weapon skills by 20. Not 20%, just a flat 20. Hypercharge covers up to 5 weapon skills, but at this level you are only able to feasibly fit 4 unless you happen to have an unreasonably high amount of skill speed. As Hypercharge only boosts single target potencies, Heat Gauge does nothing for you on AoE. I recommend using Hypercharge whenever you can fit 4 weapon skills and have the Heat Gauge to use it. Although, I also recommend trying to sit on 50 Heat Gauge combined with a specific ability in your arsenal. Speaking of which, let's take a look at your other abilities. Remember, abilities can be used between weapon skills. I have a short that explains this in more detail. Reassemble guarantees that your next weapon skill is a critical direct hit, which equates to at least 75% more damage. You want to use reassemble leading up to clean shot, as it is your strongest weapon skill. If you can make sure this also overlaps with hypercharge, that will make clean shot even stronger. As such, try to save heat gauge to use alongside reassembled clean shot. On the other hand, don't save reassemble for hypercharge. With two or more targets, you should use reassemble on spread shot instead. Additionally, gauss round is another ability that simply does some damage to a single target. You should weave these between weapon skills whenever they are available. Note that you can hold two uses of gauss round at any one time. So, as long as you use them regularly, you don't have to stress about using them instantly. As the ranged physical role, you also have access to certain role actions. Let's go over the important ones. While moving around in a dungeon, Peloton allows you and your party to move faster. Always make sure to use this when not in combat. Head Graze allows you to interrupt interruptible actions, which are indicated by a blinking and pulsing red cast bar. Arm's length prevents you from being pushed by most actions. Take note, you learn this action at level 32, so you don't have it yet. Second Wind is nice for healing yourself when you take a lot of damage. Consider saving Second Wind if the damage was taken by the entire party, as the healer will probably need to cast a party-wide heal anyway. You also have Foot and Leg Graze, however, these actions are rarely ever very useful outside of niche circumstances. Now. Before moving on to new actions, let's briefly cover positioning. As a ranged physical damage dealer job, the machinist has both great range and great mobility. Despite this, you should try to stick close to your group. In essence, if you have no good reason to stand far away from your target, it is better to get closer to your group, as it will make it easier for your healer to heal you, for instance. 
With all that out of the way, let's finally talk about your level up actions. At level 35, you learn the weapon skill Heat Blast. This action does a couple of things. First, you can only use it when Hypercharge is active. Second, its recast timer is only 1.5 seconds rather than 2.5 and this is unaffected by skill speed unlike normal weapon skills. It also reduces the cooldown of Gauss round by 15 seconds whenever you use it. Due to this shorter recast timer, it is very easy to fit 5 of them in hypercharge and should be the only weapon skill you use during hypercharge windows now. Take note that Heat Blast also benefits from the 20 bonus potency from hypercharge. As Heat Blast has such a short recast time, you should at most weave one ability between each cast. And as it reduces the cooldown of Gauss Round so aggressively, it is highly recommended to make space to use Gauss Round between Heat Blasts. And make sure to have spent all of your Gauss Rounds before using Hypercharge. As you can hold up to 100 Heat Gauge, I recommend planning your Hypercharge uses so it does not force you to delay other, higher priority actions that can't wait as well. For example, like using Hotshot on cooldown, or using Reassembled Clean Shot, which, by the way, you should now use without Hypercharge. Finally, Heat Blast is better than Spread Shot on up to 3 targets, due to a combination of its potency, short recast timer, and the cooldown reduction of Gauss Round. At level 40, you learn the abilities Rook Auto Turret and Rook Overdrive, and unlock the Battery Gauge. Let's focus on the Battery Gauge first. Clean Shot generates 10 battery gauge, while Hot Shot generates 20 battery gauge, up to a cap of 100. The Rook Auto Turret ability spends at minimum 50 battery gauge, but up to 100 battery gauge when used. This spawns a turret that shoots your enemies for you until it runs out of battery, after which it uses Rook Overload for a heavy finisher. Rook Overdrive can force the turret to use Overload early, but this only means you get fewer shots in, so this should only be used at all if you know what you're doing. If you know the boss is going to become invulnerable or disappear for instance. The turret always shoots 5 shots in total and adding extra battery gauge increases the potency of the shots and the final overload, approximately doubling the total damage with 100 battery gauge. The most important factor when choosing when to use Rook Auto Turret is using it at a convenient time where you know the full value of its attacks will be spent, or when allies give you damage increasing buffs which your turret will also benefit from. The fact that Spread Shot produces no battery gauge does not change anything in its usefulness. However, if you are about to use Spread Shot while the next step in your combo sequence is specifically Clean Shot then it is worth using Clean Shot on two targets specifically. Hot Shot is also worth using on two targets due to the converted potency of Rook Auto Turret. At level 45, you learn the abilities Wildfire and Detonator. Wildfire is a 2 minute cooldown that applies an effect to your target that tracks your weapon skills on the enemy for the next 10 seconds. For every weapon skill you hit the target with in the duration, Wildfire will explode for 100 potency worth of damage. Wildfire explicitly caps out at 6 weapon skills, however, you can only feasibly fit 1 regular weapon skill and 5 heat blasts in the 10 second window anyway, so this is not that important. To do this, cast Wildfire as late in your recast timer as you can without delaying your next weapon skill, this is commonly called late weaving, and then cast a regular weapon skill followed by hypercharge and 5 heat blasts. Alternatively, you can also weave Hypercharge and Wildfire together, use 5 Heat Blasts and finish with a regular weapon skill. You should try to keep close to 50 Heat Gauge whenever Wildfire is about to be ready to make sure it does not get delayed, as it is quite potent. If using Wildfire on cooldown will require you to use Hypercharge overlapping with Hotshot or Reassembled Clean Shot, then I recommend using those options first. Prioritize Hotshot Highest, then Reassembled Clean Shot, and then Wildfire and Hypercharge. When you use Wildfire, the button turns into Detonator, which, like Rook Overdrive, simply allows you to force it to explode early. You should only use this if you know why you're using it. At level 50, you learn the ability Ricochet, which is an almost identical ability to Gauss Round, it just also has an AoE component attached to it. These two actions do not share cooldown, so you should make sure to weave both between your other attacks. Take note that Heat Blast will also reduce the cooldown of Ricochet on every use, so during hypercharge windows, you should alternate weaving Gauss Round and Ricochet to make sure none of the cooldown reduction goes to waste. 
Now, to round off, let's cover an actual boss fight opener and rotation. Start with Hotshot, weaving Gauss round and ricochet. Then split shot, again weaving Gauss round and ricochet. Slug shot, weaving reassemble and then clean shot. Use two more 1 2 3 combos and then weave both Rook Auto Turret and Wildfire. Split shot, weave hypercharge and use five heat blasts, making sure to alternate weaving Gauss round and ricochet. You can only weave one for each heat blast. Due to how you can't guarantee that you enter a fight with enough gauge for Rook Auto Turret or Hypercharge, Machinist has this somewhat awkwardly long combo sequence before the actions that depend on these gauges take off. If you enter a fight with enough gauge to use Hypercharge, you should weave Reassemble, then Wildfire and then weave Hypercharge after the first clean shot. The key things to watch for throughout a fight is to make sure Hotshot is always used on cooldown and that Reassemble is used alongside Clean Shot as close to it being available as possible. Similarly, saving Heat Gauge to use Wildfire as soon as possible correctly is also important. Should any of these three requirements overlap, I recommend using Hotshot first, then Reassemble and then Wildfire. Beyond this, you just need to find opportunities to use Rook Auto Turret where it makes sense and spending heat gauge on extra hypercharges where it does not overlap with any of your other priorities. Also, make sure to use Gauss Round and Ricochet whenever they are available. Now, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support me and my channel, you can like the video, leave a comment, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when next I post a video. And if you want to give even more support than that, you can also become a member of the channel. Fun fact, it used to be believed that Wildfire could sometimes fit 7 weapon skills before it was set to strictly 6. This was typically a misunderstanding and the reason why it is now strictly 6 is because the 10 second duration on Hypercharge actually might make it possible by chaining Hypercharge windows to fit 7 heat blasts in Wildfire, which is an unwelcome complexity in the rotation.